Okay, today we just received the shaft that we just ordered. We're going to ch check and see if the spline is going to fit the gear. And it turns out it's an exact fit, nice and tight. The only problem is because it has a tapered gear tooth on the end, the original, gear, the original shaft has a straight cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut this for length, we're going to turn this down, and then we're going to use a file to shave this just enough so we can get this all the way on, plus have enough in here to go into the drive sprocket, which is right here. Now this actually fits a little tight, just barely gets started. So that means that this shaft is a little bit bigger than the original, just by a shade so when we go to put it into this piece, it's actually going to be a press fit. We're going to put this on the press. We're going to press this together. We might take a file and just very, very lightly shave the first half of this shaft, but the tighter the fit, the less the slop, the longer it's going to last. So it looks like this shaft is going to work. The next challenge is to cut this shaft for length. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to take this shaft, and you can see I've started it with a hacksaw. We're going to cut this shaft off by cutting with a hacksaw this way, get the exact length so that this shaft is exactly the same as this one. Then when we get done, we have to turn this area down to the size of this, so the baron can press back on. So, let's begin. Okay, now as you can see, we've cut the shaft. We're going to put the shoot two shafts together now to make sure that we got the, the length exactly correct. As you can see, a little jagged here, but we're going to turn that in, in the vise and in the lathe to bring it down. So you can see that the spline is exactly the same. They mesh perfectly. Now all we have to do is turn this shaft down to that size for the bearing. That's the next step. Okay, as you can see I have found a bushing that fits this exactly tight. So I actually had to press it in. And that allows this to turn. And we're in the process of turning this down now. Based on the depth of the original shaft, which is here, we want to duplicate this size. Now this size makes out to be let's see, we're going to zero out our gauge and it should be 20 millimeters. And that's a 20.13. If we just tunk it tight, it comes up to 20.02. Right now we are down to 20.5. So we've got 0.5 millimeters left to go. And at the way that, that we're turning this is very, very slowly. We turn on our lathe. We're going to turn it in about a half of a thousandth and let it turn out. And we're going to keep doing that. I'll demonstrate here. I don't know if the camera can actually catch up, but there's a cutting bit over on this side. What I do is I turn it back by hand just to make sure we don't have any high spots. And I gotta bring it back all the way to touching the edge. Okay, okay we're gonna turn it in another thousand, half of a thousand. Okay. 
cut it going back. thing that I keep doing to make sure that we don't have any kind of a runoff is I turn the lathe in against this, the turning backwards till I hear it scrape, just to make sure it's not wobbling. scraping all the way evenly. Tight right there. Pretty much all the way around. So now it's square again. Turn it back over. Turn it back on. We'll make one more pass. First we're going to make sure let's see what our thickness is at this point. We're down to two point 20.37 and that's about where it's 41 2.20.41 so we still got a little ways to go there is also a spacer that goes on to here that will actually come right up and act as that shelf so if we don't get these 100% as long as the gear still comes up to this point and stops this will actually stop it even further because this goes all the way onto there like that so this will go up against this edge where we've cut it and it'll stop it just like this shelf did this actually came right up to there and stopped it so now we're going to take out our dremel tool and we're going to work on this and then we're going to press it all together we have finally taken the splines and we have filed them down so they no, no longer flute out the way that they did. It's still a little bit of a tight fit, but we want this gear, when it goes on, to fit nice and tight. It still won't bottom all the way up. So what we've been doing is taking a file and filing this inner edge. Now we're putting some notches into this, but this is going to be pressed inside the barren anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. This should also help for the, this to be uh, filed just enough so that it will also fit inside of our drive coupler. And it just barely starts. But once we get working it in a couple of times, hopefully this will actually be a press fit when we get done. Um, it could be that these need to be cleaned out a little bit too, so we'll, we'll also work on uh, cleaning this up to make sure this is a nice tight fit. And if we can get the, the gear to also go on so that it tightens all the way to the end, I may have to press it the last little bit with the press, and that will take all the slop out and cure our problem. Okay. We've taken the, bat, the press, we've pressed this gear onto the shaft, we've pressed the bearing and the spacer on, we now have a press fit with absolutely no play. The only thing we got left to do now is to get this 
so that it slides all the way in. We may have to do a little bit of filing on here, a little bit of polishing just to get it to go in. It's that close. Once that goes all the way in, so the two of these come up against each other, we can put the box back together and make sure that we have, when it turns, we got no wobble as far as this gear meshing with the other one. So it looks like we were able to build ourselves a new shaft, and we are back in business. Well, we now have the drive coupler is now pressed on, goes right up against the bearing. The uh, bearing here is pushed right up against the gear. So as you can see down the side of here, this is the shelf. But this pushes right up against this gear. This gear now has a spacer in here for the bearing, and it's all tight. Nothing has any play to it at all. Now the next thing we have to make sure of is that when we put this back into the gearbox, we have to line this slot, this ring up, get this bearing back into place here, push it right down in nice and tight. Now what we've got now is we have to make sure that this gear is not wobbling when the shaft is turning and getting too tight into this gear. The next thing we've got to be careful of is how tight these two gears fit together. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to look down in here where these two gears come together and as we turn them we've got to have an air space inside of there all the way around so that we know that it's not getting tighter in one spot during rotation than another. And we go all the way around in a full rotation and we've got an even gap all the way. So we have no wobble to the gear. We do not have any slop in the gear anymore. It's a very nice tight fit. Looks like we're ready to put the box back together and see how she flies.